episode 31. Myself, Samuel Law. I've got coach with me, bro. What are you saying? Yeah, another week, another episode. Yeah, really. yeah. Um, yeah, as always, we'll get right into it. Tottenham just dropped three points at home to Newcastle. Um, did anyone see that coming? No, nah, no one saw it coming, man. Newcastle has lost their first two. Tottenham's started okay. Got a decent draw at um, Man City as well and whatnot. So, at the end of the day, the, the, I'm sure the odds and all that sort of stuff were on Tottenham home win. Newcastle struggling as it is. But, listen, that's the Premier League, isn't it? That's football. So, Joe Linton took his goal really, really well. I think he's now off the mark. He seems like he's made for the Premiership. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you think of Joe Linton? Once he gets up to be, he's, he's one of those strong centre-forwards that Newcastle need. What, because, what country is he from? I'm not sure, you know. Is he, is he Brazilian or something? Jamie. Oh, sorry, we've got Jamie here as well to pull out. AKA Ricky. Joe Linton, yeah, but okay, he's, 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 he's not a favela Brazilian. He's one of the new school European ones. Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's those guys there. No flavour. But okay. for the Premier League, he's strong up there. He was holding off Sanchez, holding off um, Ardeverald and mm-hmm. whatnot. So he did well up front, especially by himself with at that much possession. Because mm-hmm. obviously Tottenham had most of possession and stuff, and that was it. So, but listen, VAR came into it as well. As well. So. They said Kane's Kane's challenge wasn't a penalty. So well, wait, I say the cells? It looked like it looked like the cells dived in front of him, basically. That's, that's what it was. But I think VAR's come back and said it's not clear and conclusive, basically. So, uh, so wait, so because, the referee didn't give it. Yeah. Uh, and then when oh. he went out of play, they went to the VAR and the VAR said it's not clear and conclusive. Now people know like you always like over this weekend. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of <clears throat> like the crowd chant F VAR. You know that, say the uh, decision didn't go their way, and they'll say F, obviously I'm not going to say the full word, mm. F-V-A-R, v- F-V-A-R. In that situation there, VAR did their job. Now, the person that's looking at it, the replay is the person that's making the decision saying, I don't think it was a penalty. Yeah, so I agree with the ref. Yeah, so that's what the VAR is saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with it, yeah. So that's why the referee, after it was all done, the VAR decision, because obviously they got screens at, at White Hart Lane. So after the, the decision came up or whatever, he just put it to his ear. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. I didn't give it. Yeah. VAR didn't give it. So it's not, not even VAR didn't give it. The guys that looked at the replay in the studio didn't give it. It's like VAR yeah, is, is the replay and it's straight the job. That's the VAR, isn't it? Like, mm. that's the, they didn't give it. So it's basically backing up what the referees saw and whatnot. And that's it. So. But it was a penalty, though. I think it was a penalty. But I just think with the VAR, especially in this country, they're not trying to overturn so much things that the referee is doing. Because they don't want to override a referee so much, unless it's really... But why, though? Because no, but he lied you, in front of him. What well. I'm saying, that penalty there, I can see why they didn't give it. I would give it, because I could just see a man diving in front of Kane's feet mm. and taking him out. But I can see why they didn't give it, because it's not really clear and okay. conclusive. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But to me, I'm giving that penalty. Are you overturning it if you're one of the people that saw no, it? No, even if I, if I was the ref, in real time... Yeah, no, but I'm saying, time. if you've missed it as a ref and you're one of the guys in the studio... Mm. That's looking at it back. Would you would overturn it? Would you have the balls to say no? Nah. I, I would give it mm. at the end of the day. I would give it, but I'm saying that how VAR's come out, they've already said it. They're not trying to override a referee too much. If it's clear that the referee has clearly missed it, mm-hmm. 100%, mm-hmm. they will give it. Okay. But if it's 80%, 75%, the they'll just keep it what the ref okay. said, basically. Um, Joe Linton's goal. Who was at fault for that? Um, for me... It's clearly it was Sanchez. I don't know what Sanchez was doing. Like, you 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 got Joe Linton on your left shoulder, you've got um, Ardeverald on your right shoulder, and beyond Ardeverald, you've got your right back, and Atsu's got the ball on the left wing. But there's no one in between Atsu and Sanchez. Like, no one's in the pocket, no so threat. no one's no. There's no threat. The only threat was Joe Linton on his left shoulder. So you even can even see that um, Danny Rose. He was tucked in a bit, but he was thinking that yo, there's no pressure there then there's no one in that pocket. So that means, Sanchez, you mark Joe Linton, mm. and then if it comes there, I'll cover you. Mm. But what ended up happening is that Sanchez got sucked into Ardeviro for some odd reason, got sucked to the ball. It went over his head. Then Rose has had to react, mm. but he's reacted too late. So Joe Linton took his goal quite well, to be fair. Um, obviously, we're going to get onto United later. Mm. But, you know, United losing at home, the first loss of the season, you're thinking that... We, we should have started better than this in terms of... We've done, we've done well against Wolves and Chelsea in hindsight. Four points from those two games mm. on paper. <clears throat> you've done well. Then losing at Crystal Palace. Like I said, we'll get into that later. But 
Tottenham's losing to Newcastle. Um, you know, City and Tottenham already drawn this season. Are we going to see teams running away with it because we're going to get onto City next? Or do you reckon teams are just going to be... Because there's so many good teams in the league now, where on their day, if you're playing away, you can lose. Are we going to see kind of uh, a team run away with it or everyone's going to be running the same bunch? Well, we all know that City and Chelsea are secure. Chelsea? I mean, not Chelsea. Um, City and Liverpool. Chelsea? 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 It's a hot day today. Yeah, so we all know Man City and Liverpool are secure. Everybody's insecure. Mm. That's just what it is. The rest of the league's just insecure. Top four is insecure. Top six is insecure. Top ten, whatever you want to call it. Apart from... Um, Liverpool and City, everybody's insecure, still trying to find themselves. What do we do? Even today, um, normally you would have Tottenham star Ericsson, but maybe Ericsson might be leaving, so they can't get him injured. But the way the game was going, they needed to bring Ericsson on, which they did. But once again, it's insecurity. They don't have a replacement for Ericsson. They don't know if he's leaving. They don't know what's going on, but they need him on the pitch. So they ended up bringing him on, but realistically, is Ericsson's mind there? 100% probably not. And it looks like City obviously have that luxury. They don't, they don't have the issue of kind of squad depth. I mean, we was watching the game earlier and Ricky said to me, this City team is just looking mad. Yeah, but we, like, know about, we know about City and what Guardiola's done in terms of he's come in there, he's done the premiership for the first season, it didn't work out for him and he's realised that, yo, for a course of the season, especially a league that doesn't have a, a break, they're having a break this season as well, in February. Or is that the following season? I think the winter break's coming. Not, so this, I mean, this not this season, season. It must be nothing. You know? Something like that, anyway. But um, he knows that, yo, no Christmas break, no. It's a squad game. It's a squad game. We found out about certain teams yesterday that you're, you're, the injuries are piling up for certain people. And if you don't have the squad, then this is what happens. Sterling scores again. Really? He scored again? <laughs> Jeez, boy. Someone needs to tell Macy. Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, what do you envision for City this season? Like, okay, we can see that they've started strong and they've got a strong squad. Yeah. Me, I haven't really... The draw haven't, hasn't been made yet, the Champions League draw. Obviously, when it does come out, we'll discuss that um, in depth. But there doesn't seem to be like a standout European side to me. Like, like a, you know, usually there's like a couple that you're like, yeah, those are the big boys. This season, the big boys look like they're in England, Liverpool and Man City. What? what do you see for like City this season? What what can they do? I mean, City has to go. Has City have to challenge hard for the Champions League? There's no quarterfinals getting bounced out by. They want that. That's yeah. what they want. They That's need they to want. do that because and it's a, and this you know is is Rose reverse for Liverpool. They need to focus on the Premier League more because mm. everyone knows Liverpool win European titles. They've won the most in English history, so we know that's what they do. Mm. Man City right now in in obviously the near future and whatever's happened in the present. They run the Premier League. They've been winning the most consistent Premier Leagues. Do you got what I'm saying? And Liverpool haven't won a Premier League. So it's roles reversed for them this season. Mm. City need to concentrate more on the Champions League and Liverpool need to concentrate more on the league. Mm. Will that? W- will you see that within the games that happens during the season? Is, 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 is it going to be interesting to see? What's a good season and what's a bad season for Pep? That's what I'm saying. Pep needs to win the Champions League because I don't care what no one tells me, he failed at Bayern Munich. So people can talk about all... Oh, Pep's done this way. Bayern Munich were winning league titles before Pep came. They won the treble. They won yeah, the Champions won League when he came. Well, there you go. So, and they brought him in to win the Champions League. They didn't bring him in to win no Bundesliga. Because before the Bundesliga start, you got people like Dortmund who have practically just laid down and just said, Bayern are going to win the league and we'll just get whatever players we want to get. So Bayern Munich are all about the Champions League if you're bringing Pep in. Same with Man City. They've been winning leagues before Pep came in. So you winning leagues, cool. Now, maybe... They haven't done it. They didn't do it back to back, did they? They haven't done it back to back yet. Back to back league titles. Yeah, they haven't done it back to back. They haven't done it. City hasn't yeah. done it. He's the first one. Oh. He's the first one. Just so cool. That's a challenge that, that's that's really hard in recent years. Over the last ten years, no one's done it back to back apart from him now. Yeah. But realistically, they brought him in for that extra step, which is the Champions League. So for him, that's his challenge this season. Mm. We know you can win the league. Mm. We know you can bring that, that football that that's just transforming the whole league. The whole league's trying to play like them now. Yeah. So. His next challenge is obviously the Champions League. Obviously, um, a team that did win the Champions League, as you said, Liverpool, yeah. who are going to be probably the closest next to them this season mm. in the league. They um, beat Arsenal 3 1. Before we talk about Liverpool, no, you know what? We'll talk about Liverpool first. Um, just dominance, isn't it? Did you watch the game? Yeah, I watched the full game. Um, 
I mean, Liverpool, I think even psychologically, they've got stuff over Arsenal that even before they've walked out the tunnel, they've already beaten us. Uh, it doesn't help when your manager comes out in a press conference and even though he's joking, he says, no, nah, we don't want to play Liverpool. Don't worry, we'll come on to Arsenal in a second, but in terms of Liverpool's psyche and that, they just, like I said, they're secure. We know what we do. This is what we're going to do. Try and stop us. Mm. And most teams right now, they're coming to the age where you're already beaten in the tunnel. Arsenal's already beaten in the tunnel. The manager's not, not by every team. Maybe you're talking about Liverpool, right? I'm talking about Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool have got that psychological thing, especially at Anfield, over Arsenal right now. The Arsenal game, Arsenal fans are expecting their team to go over there and put up a semi-fight. If you put up a semi-fight mm. and get... I heard some Arsenal fans saying, oh, it's only 3-1. When they got to 3-0, I thought it was going to be 4-5. You still got wiped. Mm. Liverpool took their foot off the gas. That's why it was only 3-1. And they've taken certain players off and resting Mane and this, that. They're just taking players off because they know psychologically you're not strong enough to beat us or you're not strong enough to come back. So we will take off our players and rest. But in terms of Liverpool, that game was... Everyone knew they were going to win that game. It was just one of those games. One, one, one thing I saw was that... <clears throat> I think uh, Emery took off Ceballos and then Klopp... What you said about Ceballos? Remember what I said? I'll week. watch Ceballos when he's playing against Liverpool. That's when I'll see all this ball of ball of this. Yeah, it's cool playing against Ben Mead and that at your home ground. But when you come up against real footballers in the middle that will put pressure on you, so bias, this is what the Premier League's about. I'm saying, like, he had a very good um, game last week, yeah? Good. And um, Emery takes him off and then Klopp takes off Wijnaldum, like, I think five minutes later. Mm. And it just, it was so bait that that's what Wijnaldum's, like... They saw, okay, this guy, if there is a threat in Arsenal, is this guy. He's, we can't let him pull strings for the attack, yeah? So let's stay on him, you know? And I think they've they done a job on him in midfield. I think you're disrespecting Klopp by saying that comment there. I just don't think Sabayas is one of them players. I'm not game planning for Sabayas, I'll be real. The call he played well against Burnley, and I'm not game planning for Sabayas. Liverpool beat Arsenal and Field, given. So no, I'm, not, I'm not game planning for no Sabayas. It's not, it's, he's not that deep of a player like that. He's, he's just not that. So I think with Klopp, once again, they're secure. We're coming out, we're putting the intense pressure on you. Robinson and um, um, Trent Alexander-Arnold are going to live in your half of the pitch. And let's see how you deal with it. Let's see if you can get out your own half. That's it. Van Dijk was comfy. Even with Aubameyang as a goal threat, he, Van Dijk looked calm. Um, should Arsenal have set up? Because in hindsight, you know, because hindsight is a beautiful thing, but a lot of Arsenal fans were saying Emery should have just gone like for that. Like. Because for me, even Liverpool, they can get got at this season. I saw it with Chelsea game and I just felt like because they're not in full flow, they're not in sixth gear yet, the season just started, why not test them? Um, so some fans would have felt that put on Aubameyang, Lacazette and Pepe to match their front three and go like for like 4-3-3. But this is the problem Arsenal have. Aubameyang doesn't want to play on the wing. This is what I'm trying to say. As much as people talk about the front three and that, Lacazette can't do nothing but play the number nine role. When you bring in someone to Bamiyang, he wants to play centrally. He doesn't want to be going with his left back or right back or whatever side he's on. He doesn't want to do that. So when you have a Bamiyang, you're thinking about, Emery's probably thinking about who's more agile, who's quicker, who can help us on a counter-attack, who can cause more problems in behind. And that's going to be a Bamiyang because a Bamiyang doesn't want to play on the wing. And even if Lacazette did want to play on the wing, he cannot play that role because his body... And whatnot, he's just suited to playing number nine. He don't have the structure. He don't even last 90 minutes. He don't have the structure to do the wing play. Do you know what I'm saying? Aubameyang does have the structure to do the wing play just because he's athletic. That's why. But he doesn't want to be doing that wing play. So I thought they would have went with the front three just to go for it. But I understand why Emery saying to himself, mm, it's either or in this game. Aubameyang doesn't want to play wing. So if he doesn't want to play wing, I've got to look at my number nine position. Who can play there? Is it Lacazette or is it Aubameyang? And right now, with the athleticism and probably goals or whatever it is, even though Aubameyang's been poor against the top six clubs, he don't really score in big games like that, he's probably more suited to an away match than Lacazette is. Because Lacazette can get isolated. Van Dijk loves Lacazette. It's beautiful. Lacazette ain't moving nowhere. He ain't taking me out to the wing. He ain't doing nothing. He's not moving me around. So that's what Emery's plan would probably was. That he try and hit the hit them on the counter attack or whatever it was. During the game, uh, second half, it was I think it was three one at the time. Um Torres just scored and Neville said, You know what? Arsenal can take something from this. Not in a patronizing way, but we've seen Arsenal come to Anfield and just, you know, lie down and get battered basically. 
and for 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 a good part of the game, they put up a fight in terms of um, matching Liverpool. And they could have gone ahead with the Pepe chance and stuff like that. Was this a promising performance? In if you look, if you take a step back from the from the result, yeah, was it, did you see a difference in this Arsenal side coming to Anfield this time? If you're a social media Arsenal fan, then yes, you saw a difference. If you're a real Arsenal fan, you didn't see no difference. Because Liverpool just kept on, they were coming forward. It wasn't like, listen, it wasn't chance after chance after chance. But they were just coming, listen, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Robinson were living in their opponent's half. They were living there. They were camped. They were there, cross after cross, out ball out -ball after out ball. They were just living in their half. To me, that's pressure at the end of the day. Did you survive until, when did they score? Just before half time? Did you survive before half time? Whereas before, you may, might have crumbled in the 30th minute. Well, wait, even how, what you just said there about they were living in their half, yeah? Because mm -hmm. did Arsenal go to Diamond? I'm going to the Diamond, yeah. Diamond. So that maybe was one of the reasons. Because if you played wingers, is Trent really going to be bombing if he knows that Bamiyang's on the other end? And if he, if he leaves him, they can be punished. So what are you saying? 4 3 3, I think Arsenal should have gone. Because. Oh, what they should have, what they should have done was just attack them. You're going to lose anyway. Yeah, which is what I'm trying to say. Well, that's what I'm saying. The diamond, you're setting up for them. But if it's 4 3 3, you can attack them. Oh, no, and 100%. 100%. I, I would have went for 4 3 3. And I would have played Terreira. I'm not playing Xhaka. I would have played Terreira. It's as simple as that. Get in there, Terreira, and do what you do. Get amongst the midfielders. Because, brothers, no, 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 no matter what we say about Liverpool and how great they're playing, but if you're playing against Wijnaldum, Henderson, and Fabinho, mm -hmm. bruv, that's not. That's not. Let's you know give a shout out to Fabinho, though. No, 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 I've no, noticed. No. I've been watching no, this guy no, closely. Is, he's been say, solid with the Fabinho thing. Yeah. Once again, he's not getting exposed like that because of the the way they put pressure on you. The way Liverpool put pressure on you, they allow Fabinho to just do what Fabinho does. Mm. At the end of the day, if you got the same team that's matching Liverpool's intensity, they will expose Fabinho. They will expose a Henderson. They will expose these men. But these men are just secure. They know their job. Arsenal going into that match, you're playing four central midfielders playing a diamond. They never played that before. You got Ceballos, you got Guendozi, you, you ain't even got the battle of Torreira in there. You got Xhaka that slows everything down. Like they, they, they were just insecure with that. I knew what Emery was trying to do, pack the middle and that, but you can't pack the middle with their most dangerous players out wide, mm. which is their fullbacks. It what allows Mane and Salah to come inside and cause havoc in the pockets. Mm. So I don't understand why you're trying to block up the middle. Whereas their danger is out wide in terms of Liverpool. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that one there. Do we, um, would, would Emery just write this one off? Like, like I said, he made that comment that we don't even want to play Liverpool. Is he just going to write it off? Like, listen, that's the loss. Let's move on and maybe do something. You know what I mean? Cause I, think, I think Emery needs to be careful. That's what I need to, I need to he needs to start going for stuff. Because this is his last season, by the way. How long has he been here? He's got a two-year contract with an option of the third year. That means the club has an option to give him a third year. I think they'll keep him, man. What? Yeah. With Edu coming in now, trust me. Don't don't Edu. rely on the Edu. Just, Edu, Edu didn't hire Emery. Edu's come in as the technical director. Whatever he probably might want his own manager. And guess what? They don't have to pay no compensation if they sack him after this. So Emery needs to stop acting like he's comfortable. He needs to go for stuff now. You need you sign Pepe, play him. Play Lacazette and play however you want to do it. You might have to play Pepe behind the two or whatever you want. To, you need to stop going for matches now. All that playing this and that against Liverpool, you can't be doing that because right now Emery could be gone at the end of the season. If they're not seeing no progress, Emery will be gone and Edu's not going to be sad. Edu never brought him in at the end of the day. So the Arsenal as a club has got an option to let him go for free without no compensation or they can extend him for another year. And they did that for a reason because we're going to give Emery two years to see what he can do. If there's no improvements or whatever, bang, we're moving on. Done. Cold world. Cold world, that's Cold football. Cold world. Um, they got Tottenham next week. How do you see that going? That's at Emirates, right? Yeah, but right now, that's a big game for both clubs. Big game. That's a big game for both clubs. Big game for, for teams around them as well yeah. because someone's going to drop points. This is a big for game. For both clubs, it's a big game because now Arsenal coming back off a defeat. Tottenham losing at home surprisingly to Newcastle. So right now, it's not a Tottenham guy in there trying to get a point type of thing, even though that's what you want to do nowadays. You want to get points, as many points as you can to get away, like against the top six teams and whatnot, and then win your home matches. They're supposed to be winning this, but now it's set them back a little bit. Mm. So they have to go there as well to prove a point and whatnot. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be, to me, that's a 50-50 match. How would you set up if you're Arsenal? 
You got to go at home. Yeah. You got to go with Aubameyang, Lacazette, and Pepe. Just go for it. This is what the fans want to see. But you, you said earlier that the front three, Aubameyang's not going to play wing. No, How I'm, are you going to force I'm them saying, in? Yeah, what, what would you go saying, with? I'm saying that I'm just going with that front three. But I'm not doing the whole two on the wing, one in the middle. I will put Pepe in a free roll, and then I'll put these two up front. Simple. So none of you are playing the wing roll. Simple as that. And then the three behind them, I've got to let them know that, listen, we're going to have one central, but the guys either side of the central player, just be mindful of their fullbacks coming forward. So you might have to shift over to the right. You might have to shift over to the left. So, do you get what I'm saying? But also, I would let Aubameyang and Lacazette know that, yo, because I'm not putting one of you on the wing, I need some production up there. Mm. I don't need no full, full, like, sort of finishing. I need goals up there. Aubameyang looked yeah. a bit, like, that's like days ago yesterday. He looked casual with it. Well, where's Aubameyang's, where's his thing? When I, went, when I went back to saying about the squad game, where's his competition? Um, yeah, Lacazette. If it's luck for luck. Like. not competition, man. Lacazette's not Aubameyang's competition. Because Lacazette can't do what Aubameyang does. Aubameyang could do a host of things. Lacazette can only play number nine and that's it. And he can't even, and he ain't and even, and even got the stamina as well most time. That's why he was getting brought off. Arsenal fans always wonder, oh, why are you bringing like a, He don't last through the game. Emery can see this. They've got medical staff and that saying, yo, when it comes to running and that, Lacazette don't finish well. He don't finish strong. Do you get what I'm saying? But we'll see. But I, that's what I would go for next week. Do you bring Torreira in? 100%. you got to bring Torreira in. And who comes out? Xhaka. Xhaka comes out. Xhaka should never be in. So... Xhaka, like a lot of Arsenal fans, they tell me you might know that Xhaka, but he's one of the more physical presences in midfield. How like, long Xhaka been there? Uh, two years, three years now. What? How long Moderator, been there? check that. Because for me, the certain man, when you've been at a club at a certain amount of time, you're supposed to be the number one option in there. Mm. And right now, people are still debating whether he should be an people option after a major tournament. I remember watching the tournament saying, "Now nah, he's going to Arsenal." So it might have been 2016, well, seven. Yeah. yeah. It was 2000. 2016, right? Summer. 16, yeah. yeah, it's about 16. So he's been there for what? How many years, years now? Three years? Come on, man. That's more than enough time to establish yourself as anyone new coming in here, the Terreras and that, you're playing alongside me. I've been here. I know how the Arsenal thing works. But right now, people are still debating. Do we play Xhaka? Do we play? So once people are still debating after three years mm. in the central midfield role, you're, you're finished for me. You're not. I won't be playing you in a North, North London derby. I'm not doing it. Um, so what, do you, what, what score down? What's, what's the score down for that? It's at Emirates, so I'm gonna say. I'm, go- I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going three one Arsenal. Three one Arsenal at the Emirates, yeah. The they are going to play Sanchez like he did today. He's, he's, it's over. Three one Arsenal, yeah. Three one Arsenal, okay. go- and because they're at the Emirates as well. Yeah, I'll, a good home record against. I'll them. say two one Arsenal. I think Arsenal's gonna win that. Four two. What do you say? Four two Arsenal. Four two Arsenal. Ricky says. Ah, right, so we'll see you next week. Um, United. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some water? Do you want any, do you want any, do you want any, any snacks yeah, before we yeah, yeah. talk about this? Yeah, I've been lips in this one though. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Man United lost at Palace, uh, against Palace at home, 2-1. Two, two, Did you watch the game? Yeah, I watched the game. Um, where do you want to start with that? I'll let you just no, have no, three I'll let you talk first. I want you, uh, you want you first go. of all, I've got to address the people that, you know, because I was one, I was very vocal when we lost Lukaku, saying um, we don't need to replace Lukaku straight away with goals. In terms of, you didn't really miss it. You didn't really uh, appreciate him when he was here. I don't see the big need to replace him now. Um, the other strikers can chip in, and they'll have to work uh, better and harder and score. So we've seen people like Martial playing harder. He's not playing within himself, etc. Um, obviously, the strikers didn't have a good good uh, performance yesterday but I don't feel the issue was there I feel the issue was creativity yeah and I understand that strikers have to create chances for themselves as well the top strikers do but for me you're playing Pogba in the sixth role yeah in a 4-2-3-1 so that's where he plays for France right um, he's got McTominay next to him he's got Jesse Lingard in front of him now for me Jesse Lingard what did not do his job um, he didn't create anything he wasn't even making decoy runs. He looks. I was watching him, and he looked like he was just floating around, standing next to the <clears throat> opponents, like asking for the ball. I'm not sure what he wanted to do with the ball there, but the the strikers were starved of chances. They had 22 shots. I think it was like three on target, four on target, 
Um, yeah, it wasn't a good day overall. But I just feel like creativity is the issue. If you have a player, maybe replace Lingard, and you had like a in the summer we, when we when I said let's buy someone like Bruno Fernandez, because what it was was City um, Palace they had two banks of four, no space in behind. They said come and break us down. Now if there's no space in behind, guys like Daniel James and Rashford and Martial, there's no way they're, they're not going to run in behind. So you need someone to to be able to be clever enough to break break up play, and I just don't see Lingard or but so many doing that. Um, yeah, what, what what would you say about the game? Where do I start with that game? Just this from even from manager to players, I don't even know where to start. But I'll start with the manager first. Um, the formation is 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 getting me irritated now. And I've always said it like four three three is the formation that creates havoc for opponents, even if they want to do two banks of four or bank of four, bank of five, because you can you've got pivots. You've got one man in the middle, that's the DM, and you've got two pivots either side of him. So when we have the flat two, it's easy to mark them because they're square. And then you've got the number, and if you've got a number 10, that number 10 must be able to flow and find and have the IQ to find the right spaces at the right times. And we, Jesse Lingard is not... He's just not that. He's not. What enough. do you think about he's Jesse not, Lingard? Not, Let's talk about Jesse. Jesse. Listen, Jesse Lingard is a squad player, but at the moment, this is what we have to deal with. At the end of the day, he's a squad man. He's a man that you bring on FA Cups, Europa, Europa Leagues, whatever. Once again, I always go back to my argument. A lot of these men are athletes that are playing football. They're not football orientated like that up top. I can I can tell by a man when I'm watching him play football if he's got a brain or not. I can tell when he receives the ball. Has he checked his shoulder? Is he on the half turn? All that sort of stuff. But when a guy's back towards, he's back towards, towards goal, then he's playing it back from where he came from. I can tell we don't have the IQ. And for, for me, Lingard don't have the IQ. He should be out there on the right wing just doing the shuttle runs up and down. Because he can cut in a little bit, do all that sort of stuff. Cool. If he, if he loses it there, cool. But where he loses the ball... The, kills the, the, ball, the ball came into him like three or four times yesterday the and the ball turn. bounced off him. He's not on the half turn. He ain't even checked his shoulders to be on the half turn like a number 10. So he's just there for the press. By the end of the day, when you've got the ball, you've got to be able to do something with it. Okay? Does, he, does he need to be taken out of the, of the team for... for... He needs to, I don't mind Jesse Lingard being in the team, but he's got to be part of the front three. If Sanchez is not coming back in, he's got to be part of the front three. Daniel James, I'm not trying to see Daniel James from the start. I'm not trying to see that mm. because his football IQ is of a championship player. And it's not a problem. I'm not getting on to James because he's not ready. But what I'm saying is that for him... He should be coming on every 20 minutes. Whether we're winning or losing, he should come on. Yeah. That's what I think. He's an impact sub. That's yeah. what he should do. Feel his way in. Now, he's now a starter. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, Oli. Like, you've got to sort that stuff out. So, for me, starting from the manager, the formation is not correct at the end of the day. There's no, there's no passing lanes. There's no pivots. There's no sort of flexibility. It's just a flat two who just keep playing square balls to each other. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for the pass in the pocket. And Lingard is not free. And then when Lingard's not free, James is on the right, who's got no football IQ. He don't know when to come inside, when to go back out. And when he does, he loses the ball. Then you've got Rashford. Don't let me even get started about his you IQ. You said you wanted to say something about yeah, Rashford. Yeah, yeah, Don't let me get... Uh, hopefully, hopefully United fans are now seeing what I'm saying. Yeah? The guy is not that player. He's not a number 10. Don't know why he's got that big shirt on. Yeah? He's not that guy at the end of the day. He might look the part, he might have a good technique and that, but his football IQ is terrible. He don't know when to pick up, when to come inside, he don't know when to go outside. He don't, I see one time, he, 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 he ran and left the ball somewhere. <laughs> I saw that as he well. He ran and left the ball. That shows you your horse playing football. No, 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 we're not going to let you do that. You're not going to do that. Let me give you another example so you know that I'm just not getting onto Rashford. Rashford was 50 yards out from the ball. <laughs> saw that yeah? lot when he volleyed it. for the shot. <laughs> I said, you know what, brother? Cool. <laughs> cool, brother. Cool. Bro, you know, you no, know, no, 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 no. I nearly actually, dashed my phone. You know when I saw that volley, yeah. I said, Rash, you know what, fam? You keep doing these things because you just keep proving my point that you're not learning. Your IQ's not up there. For me, yeah, Rash just needs to relax. No, no, no. I think that's my advice to him. Like, relax. Because it seems like he feels... He's got to take it on that like, upon himself that I have to be like the game winner, the game changer. Sometimes if he's not if he's not um, coming off, just keep it flowing and don't try. You're not gonna. You're not a world beater. Well, yeah, know your strengths. What I'm saying, you keep saying keep it flowing. He seems like he's rushing but things. You know, you say keep it flowing and that, 
But we have to understand, you see, with Rashford, I don't know how you're going to get it, Samo, when you, when you keep getting older. His football IQ is poor. When he comes inside, he don't know when to lay off and bounce pass, or he don't know when to run in behind, or when he comes in short, he don't know how to work in tight spaces and that. So him, his, his get-out plan is shoot, because he's got a shot on him. That's his get-out plan. But if you're playing that left-forward role, you've got to be clever. Everyone that plays that role is clever. And guess what? We can't have Rashford and James to non-IQ sort of footballers that are just athletes, just running. Because like you said, when, Sa- when Crystal Palace come and say, OK, we've got two athletes on the wing, let's drop deep. Midfielders, drop five yards back too. Now what you got United. We ain't got no man with IQ in, at, on out wide and whatnot, like a Bernardo Silva or whatever, who knows to come in. Bernardo Silva is not a winger, but he knows when to come into that pocket. He knows when to give and go. Over, Even you Sterling saying? does, if Ster- I, I have to admit that. Sterling Sterling, does you know well. Sterling's IQ's up there. I've been saying it from time. He knows how to get into them little pockets and whatnot. Rashford is just a... I just can't deal with his IQ. Like he said, he does need to settle down. Yeah, he does need to settle down, but he just IQ's just never been there, Samo. I've never seen... I've just seen him grow physically and get better physically. I've never seen him get better mentally. Well. And do you know what I'm saying? So for me, that's that. And then obviously I've said my formation with, with Oli and whatnot. And then I'm going to go back to your boy because I'm not going to let him off the hook as well. Paul Pogba. Yeah. Okay. I've said it already and I'll say it again. Yeah. I'm sick of the excuses for this brother. Yeah. I'm sick of the excuses because guess what? People say, oh, he gets the ball and he looks up and there's no options. What I'm saying if I'm Pogba and I keep getting caught on the ball because my thing is I have to keep the ball because the guys in front of me are not moving enough. Cool. So what I'm going to do as Pogba... Brothers, when I get the ball, I'm going to fire it into your feet. Wherever you are on the pitch, if you're in front of me, I'm going to fire it into you. Lingard, if you don't want to move, I'm firing it into you. Rashford, if you don't want to move, I'm firing it into you. He tried that a couple of times. He did. He passed it into Lingard and the ball was coming off Lingard. I'm saying that's Lingard. Obviously, I know Pogba does his thing. He does that in his sleep. Those couple balls. But I'm talking about his overall game. A lot of people are letting him off the hook. The guy missed the penalty against Wolves. It cost us the game. No one can't tell me nothing. The guy tried to do a Cruyff turn against two players. Cool, people are saying that, oh, he's the only one that could do something. But sometimes as a midfielder, just do your job. So guess what? We can blame the others in front of you for not doing their job. And the thing about midfielders, centre midfielders, the best thing about a midfielder's trait, move the ball quickly. Move, pass, move, pass, move, pass. Pogba move looks so quickly. good when he, when he does a pass to move team. You can't stop you him. Can't stop him. When he gives and goes, you cannot stop Pogba. He's, listen, he's athletic and... Uh, one thing I will say about Pogba, even though he loses the ball so much, his IQ is really good. Mm. Do you got know what I'm saying? His IQ is really good. No, nah, but even when he lost the ball yesterday, yeah, I'm sorry, but Palace must have ran like 60 yards, bruv. Someone take him... We see City do this all the time, yeah? When you count a City, one, Fernandino's the king at it. He just takes you out, you know, everyone is, comes back. The Pogba lost the ball, and yes, he lost the ball, but come on. How dare they get all the way to the goal? Do you know what I'm saying? But hear what I'm saying. The reason why they get to the goal, because there's no DM. They're playing the flat two. So if Pogba tries to move forward a bit, but who's going to be square with him? He's going to be square. He's, tell me he's never on the, the, you know what I'm saying? Because he's not playing DM. When you have a DM there, that's why Fernandino can block that run. Mm. That's why a certain man can block that run. We have a flat two. When you have a flat two, that leaves a middle, that leaves a gap in the middle. Mm. So when that man on the left, which is Pogba, goes forward and he loses the ball, there's a gaping hole in the middle there. It's not like I've lost the ball in the pivot on one of the three and then if you win the ball back off me, you're going to run into my DM. You're not going to run into no DM. You're running straight into the back four. So I'm not understanding why Oli keeps persisting with his flat two. It doesn't work. Pogba only plays well in the flat two when you've got a Kante that can do the running for him. Like, Kante, will, Kante would have caught up to whoever it was. Up. It was yeah. Zaha that travelled with the ball. Oh. I think it was Zaha or Benteke. One of them travelled with the ball. He would have cut that out. That's, what, that's why you can play a two with Pogba. But you can't play a two when you've got McTominay, who, who's growing and still learning his trade as well. Uh, no. um, so, obviously, United have got Southampton next week. And now that's turned into like... Um... Oh, sorry, sorry. Before you move into Southampton, my, my point about Pogba where I'm not letting him off the hook. Mm. Just do your job from now on, Pogba. Don't worry about keeping the ball for too long. Keep the ball moving. Fire it into Martial. Fire it into guys so we know that you're firing it into them early and they're not moving. They're always standing next to a defender. But when you hold the ball for too long, the camera is zoomed in on you. You are the one losing it against Wolves. You're the one that lost it against Wolves last season, dilly-dallying on the ball. But guess what? You might be dilly-dallying on the ball because... There actually might not be no movement in front of you and you have to take an extra touch or whatever. But don't make, don't make it... 
Don't make it seem like you're the bad player. But Just keep not, the ball moving. Do you know who does it well with the moving? Fred. Fred, get that. when Pogba wants to do them passing kind of from what triangles. Heard, from, what, so from what I've heard about Fred, I don't know if he got married recently or whatever and he's gone in his honeymoon or whatever was going on there. Fred is not fit right now for whatever reason. He's either not fit or... He's just not getting selected. God, he knows, even in God, the God knows why he's, why he chose to get married I at that know, time. He could have he could have got married after the last game of the season, bro. Yeah, that's 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 a personal thing for guys. Like, so I don't want to go into their personal life. But either way, this is what I'm trying to say. If we had done our thing in the transfer market, we wouldn't be worrying about Fred. Mm-hmm. That's my whole I thing. Agree. I agree. You know what I'm saying that's why. Once again, before you move to Southampton, I'm gonna move it back to Oli. What I wanted to say about Oli. With Oli, my whole thing, Samuel, this season, I was gonna be onto the board. I was going to be on to Woodward hard. Mm-hmm. But guess what mistake you made, Oli, when you come out in your last press conference before the season starts? I'm happy with my squad. Nah, man, I'm not going with that, man. No, 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 no. listen, listen. Nah, man, I'm not no, going listen, with that. Listen. You see managers no, do that. No, 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 but what I'm saying, this, you see managers do it, but at Man United right now, this is what Oli should have said. We've, there were certain areas that we wanted to strengthen. We weren't able to capture our targets um, this summer, but I did tell you fans before the season ended that it's not going to take one transfer window to fix this you know what that lets us fans know you know what maybe you didn't want Fernandes maybe you did want other players but guess who's not making it happen Woodward and he's been here for six years and you're the fourth manager now let's get on to Woodward because our manager has clearly said he hasn't been rude like Mourinho was you know how Mourinho mm-hmm. was just despondent mm-hmm. rude his face is screw up in that Solskjaer's not like that he could have easily just said it nicely there's certain areas that we wanted to strengthen but we was not able to get our targets yeah. this time we don't want to go for B players we want to go for our he didn't say that no, 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 he no, said no, we've no. got money but we're trying to get the right but players this is what I'm saying but you're talking about Bruno Fernandes could we have got him yes or no I think we could have yeah. so who's he trying to get over Bruno Fernandes then at this current stage that he wouldn't have helped us in the middle long stuff is that what it is is that what we've come down to so this is what I'm saying. Solskjaer is now has he has to understand how the game works. Don't follow Mourinho because he had a push up face, so everyone was just like miserable around Mourinho. So that's what his mistake was. Now Solskjaer's coming with the happy face. He's not miserable on that. But don't come in and be on the wave that Woodward's on because you will get sacked. And, be, and Woodward yeah. will be still be there. Yeah. All you need to do is tell the fans we were going after certain targets. We couldn't get them this summer. Yeah. But this is not going to be a one transfer window solution. Yeah. yeah? That means us fans know that you were going for other guys. And we still know it's a work in progress. And we know it's a work in progress. But now you've come out and said you're happy with your squad. Now we're looking at you. Get to work, Solskjaer. You said you're happy with that squad. Now you get to work. So guess what? Me, as, as uh, me, someone that wants Solskjaer to do well, I can't even get onto Woodward now. I can't get onto him, Samo. Uh, you know me. I hate mm-hmm. Woodward. I can't get onto him because our manager said he's happy with the squad. So I can't get onto him. I'm going to read between the lines, man. He's not happy. No, man. no, no, you can read in between. Potts did it. Potts did it when he said, We're happy with our team. When Tottenham uh, didn't buy no one, and he said, We're happy. But then he came out and said, Don't call me a, a manager, I'm a head coach. Okay. You can see he wasn't happy, but he was just covering for the board. Yeah, but no, I'm saying is that you can see, but he's put his fillers out there, though, as in, like, Yo, don't call me a manager, I'm a head coach. So if this goes tits up and we're not going for the title, we've fallen behind a little bit, I've let them guys know, as a manager, I need to have full control. If I don't have full control and you're the one buying the players, and you're not getting the players I want, I'm the head coach. Just give me who you got, and then I'll just do my best. He's just letting the fans know, yeah. it's not me, it's them guys. And that's what Solskjaer should have done. He, he didn't have to do it in a rude way. Mm. Just let us fans know a little bit. Like, yo, because we he, cause you already told us that it's not gonna, it's gonna take more than one transfer window. Mm-hmm. So repeat that message. Repeat, put the seed in the fans' mind again, again. Just keep guys, on just stick with us, stick we with us. Maguire, we, got, we got Maguire, even though Mourinho wanted Maguire, so that don't really count. But we got Maguire, we got Wan Bissaka. We're trying to show up that back four and build it from the, from the foundations upwards. Mm-hmm. Maybe next transfer window, we go for a central midfielder mm-hmm. or a couple. And this, that, and maybe in I'm the summer. I'm expecting that. I'm, I'm expecting nothing less but than the midfielder, minimum but, one. But the problem is, he's now put the pressure on him himself um, I have to look at Solskjaer now it's, it's well, sad to say that yeah, yeah. so early but I've got to look at him yeah. um, quickly before we come off that so do you see us getting the three points against Southampton no neither do I I mean fat boy Shaw went off basically short, um, Oli's assembled a counter attacking team when we got the possession we don't know what to do with it we had 70% possession yesterday he's built this team to be counter attacking so I think games against Southampton will flourish more then at home, bro, that's I what just, I I just, we're going to see I'm, that performance a lot. Teams that are going to say break us down, and we can't. But I'm looking at the squad game right now. 
Fat boy Shaw went off because he's never fit anyway. And I did tell everyone from the start of the transfer window we should be getting Danny Rose. He wants to move up north. We could have got him on the cheap and whatnot. Just get Danny Rose in because guess what? The guy is reliable. He plays every game. He's reliable. There's no point in talking about Luke Shaw. It's going to hamper. No, it will give competition to Luke Shaw. It will wake him up. Maybe you come off the burgers and chips a bit more. Do you get what I'm saying? But who's there on left back? We've got now Ashley Young coming. He's not no threat to, Ash, to Luke Shaw when he's fit. He's not no threat. At the end of the day, that's number one. Marshall's gone off. Don't know if his ankle ligament damage. So what happens there? Rashford comes to the middle. So who's going on the left now? Me, he's, personally, yeah. I think Angel Gomez deserves a, he's not a role. Coming, I'll put Chong out there instead of Angel Gomez. If no, I'm, no, talking I'm, about I'm talking about Angel Gomez in, in the midfield. I'm saying put him where Lingard's playing now oh, and yeah. move Lingard to the, to the I top. Would, I, would, for, for I, I wouldn't feed him into the Lions with, with that flat two and that number 10 position. I wouldn't feed him into the Lions because now everyone's going to expect Gomez. He's to very be. clever, though. No, he's clever. He's someone what? that does look on the half turn. You know yeah, that? He's clever, but I would like him to do play in a free. I would like it to be maybe McTominay, Gomez and mm. Pogba. That's what I would like. So it gives. So guess what? It doesn't. I prefer Gomez further up, no, not is, not, this, not deep. But, but this is the problem because he's got no experience in the Premier League right now. Throwing him in the deep and at number ten, because don't forget, if you've got a flat two, he is the ultimate guy that needs to make things happen. Yeah. And if and if opponents can just key in on Gomez and he hasn't got no Premiership experience, at the end of the day, it's going to kill his growth. You know what? A good, brilliant segue. Shout out to Stelios, man, because someone that um, has been given a number ten role. With all the inexperience of the Premier League, the faith of the manager shown in him, Mason Mount, he's actually because usually I think if Chelsea have that, if Chelsea don't have that that transfer ban, I think they're buying someone. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they've actually Mason Mount has actually had a chance to play and show what he can do in the number ten role. As you said, Angel Gomez is not ready for it, and Mason Mount's done well. Did you watch the game yesterday? Yeah, yeah, he's taking his chance. He's, he started well. Shout out Stelios. Yeah, he started well. But once again, I want to see Mason Mount come full season at the end of the day. But right now, he's taking his chance. Same with Tammy Abraham, taking his chance. Oh, I'm game. happy for Tammy, man. Yeah, I'm happy for Tammy as well. But these guys, they've really got to keep it up. That's what they... Because the transfer ain't ban ain't going to be forever. You see Chelsea though, yeah? But can I yeah, say but... something about Lampard? Yeah. If Lampard does well this season, yeah? And Solskjaer don't. That's a big problem, you know. That's a major, major problem. Because our squads are not different. Our squads, the Chelsea squad and the Man United squad is not any different. On paper, I think we're better. This is what I'm saying. And Lampard had a transfer ban, so he couldn't even buy no players. If he does better than Oli... If he finishes season, above if United, finishes above I've said Oli, it already. Okay, so that's... I've a, said it already. That's a major, major problem for me. Anyone that finishes below Chelsea should be embarrassed. It's a major, major problem for me. So... Lampard doing well ain't too good. But ain't I haven't said that though. I think every game that Chelsea's in is going to be a battle. No, no, no. I genuinely feel that. I feel like every game is going to be a watchable game. Like, yeah, you're going to want to watch them. They're going to concede they're and then they're going to have to score. Every game is going to be a battle, I, I reckon. They're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. So, um, so what? Do you, so do you see top six for them or? Top six? Um, they're in the Champions League still. I, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top six, I'll see for them. It, once again, depends on injuries, etc., etc. Certain things happen. Mm. Um, Lots of cheats coming back. Um, Callum's coming back. So they're probably going to get stronger mm. at the end of the day. So for me, what do you think of Lampard in terms of like? Do you do? You... I've always said he's the right guy for Chelsea, yeah. image wise. I know JT you know, probably wanted that. Didn't yeah, it? but JT image wise, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not Chelsea wise. But Lampard is the guy. He will get time. He's come at the right time because of a transfer ban, so you can't really get onto him or whatnot. You'll settle in, and then you'll see the, what Real Lampard's really like next season. All right, cool, man. Before we get out of here, you watched the Anthony Yard versus Sergei Kovalev fight? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Um, Brave performance from Yard, isn't it? Can I start? Basically, start, start. Right, so what I feel, yeah, is I, I said this earlier off air to Ricky. Um, I personally, before the fight, I thought Anthony Yard caught Kovalev at the right time. I thought Kovalev was kind of fading, um, getting older. Anthony Yard was a hungry young lion, lions in the camp and all that. But <laughs> Kovalev schooled him for the most part. And he, but, but however, having said that, if Anthony Yard played it right, I think he could have got Kovalev out after that eighth. Because there was an eighth where he, he put it on. He, he, threw, he emptied the tank, basically. He lay it all out on the eighth round. And I thought that that was a bit of inexperience. Because once he done that, 
the, they came out for the ninth round and he was done. He didn't even have his hands up. He's not inexperienced. It's just not I think because and Kovalev even it said it, when they asked Kovalev at the end of the fight because Kovalev came over while they were interviewing the other day, and and he they, they asked him so what do you think it was and he was like I'm just more experienced. Yeah, but he, he said it cool. He's the winner in it, so he's gonna say that. But for me, he's not gonna come out and say what I'm gonna say. Is this boxing IQ? So what do you reckon then? I'm saying boxing IQ oh, for no. yard. That's what he needs to improve. You don't need to improve on the experience. You're gonna get the experience. You're a boxer. You're no, 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 no. But that was the first time. That was the first of so many for him. That was the first time he probably cool. felt that way. But what I'm saying he is knows now I can't empty the tank this way. But hear what I'm saying. I'm saying that it all comes down to boxing IQ. This is what, see when I watch these That's guys, experience, listen, bro. Listen, listen, That's experience. No, no, not necessarily. No, no, no. no. Let but me wait, tell, pacing let me yourself. Let me tell no, you no, no, no. I'm not going to let, get, let you get away with that. Pacing yourself for let a fight. Let me tell you why I'm not going to let you get away with that. And I'm sorry to say it. And everybody will say, oh, he's the top of the class, top of the race. Bruv, when you watch these guys, you have to look at Mayweather, bruv. There's certain man that's had it from young, from inexperienced days. As they get experience, their IQ even goes even higher. Mm. But these men, when I watch them, even though they're different weight classes and that, I look at the IQ like, see Yard, I like the way Yard protects himself defensively. I didn't like at it. first. No, no, he no, did no. the whole shoulder rotting, yeah, 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 yeah. but then he had to abandon that after and he started going for the body. He had his gloves up. That, yeah. I, I prefer that. That, what I'm saying, what he was doing yesterday, like defensive-wise defensive and whatever, I liked it. Basically, he showed me a bit of IQ, but when he caught him in the eighth round, Obviously, that's when the IQ comes into it. Bruv, let me even give you an example. If one make Okay, but wait, you say it's an IQ. Next fight, is he going to do that? He might do that. He will never do that again. I promise you. That's what I'm saying. I promise you. You don't know in the No, 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 no. I promise you. That feeling he felt in the ninth round, yeah? He was spent. Like, (laughs) Ricky, you watched the fight as well in your house, right? He looked spent. Like, like, oh my God, I've zapped all my energy. He's not going to do that again. Well, we see what, so that's experience. At the end of the day, we've got to see what opponent he fights. If he fights a man that's very aggressive and onto him, let's see, he might swing it out of him. What's he going to do? Nah, see, that's the issue. Before this Kovalev fight, he's had fights where he's been getting him out of there. No, but that's what I'm saying. It that depends. was his first 12 round, it, it, I'm sure. It depends. It that, depends. He didn't make 12 rounds, but anyway, oh, oh, yeah, it depends, did he? It depends um, what opponents he fights next. Now, if you're fighting Kovalev, to stay sharp, and keep your level high. You got to fight, guys. Obviously, you can't just be on that level, but just below Kovalev, because everyone's on Kovalev. Who's that, Boatsy? It could be Boatsy, whatever. But they're gonna build that. They're not gonna. What do you think about that? Do you like Boatsy? I like Boatsy. I think he's got. He's good... a more slick operator. Yes, I think he's got better boxing IQ than Yard. But Yard's got the power. And but going back to this fight, Kovalev oh, you didn't talking, like. That's what I'm saying. You keep talking about power, but what knocked Yard over? The most lethal punch in boxing. That's a jab. I couldn't believe you it, but no, he was gone head. by then, bro. No, 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 no. no he was no, gone by then. He you was see, tired. You've you seen guys be, be be gone and spent before boxing boxing ring, but that jab, the jab is the most lethal. That punch. jab doesn't get him out of there early in the fight because he was getting hit and he was early, he was tired. Jabs, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that in boxing, the jab sets you up. It just sets you up round. If you just keep getting jabbed every round, bang. Bang, your next bang. They were jabbing it's, each other. But this is what I'm saying, but it's it's working like it's 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 tiring you down. Mm-hmm. And it because the jab comes out of nowhere sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the time it comes out of nowhere, bang. But it's not like someone head pops back. Your head just pops back, it's like, oh jeez. Then, yeah, then yeah, you try yeah, and put bang yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So for me, he was getting set up all day long with the jabs. Cause even Kovalev, when he had him on the ropes, obviously, like you said, for me, you call it experience. I just call it IQ. Sometimes I look at these boxes like Kovalev, had him on the ropes or whatever it is, but he wasn't just swinging and what in I terms do. of the IQ thing, I do agree like, that like, there's, there's one bit where Andre Ward. IQ. Yeah. Andre Ward ain't no big punch or knockout artist, where, but he's got boxing IQ. Yeah, but Yard knows he's got power. But what I'm saying is, Yard was hitting Kovalev to the body, and I think it came that sixth or seventh round. He just started going to the body, and Kovalev didn't like it. He yeah. didn't like it. He he stepped back, and this is when I'm talking about when Yard had his gloves up. Now he stopped that whole shoulder roll because even the shoulder roll thing, my, I have to say. Please, fighters, not all of you are, are Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> like, when you do that shoulder rotting, yeah, you have to have accuracy in your punches because your output is not a lot. You're basically, um, you've got your shoulder up, you're defending, and then you come with the counter and you're, you're trying to be as accurate as you can. But what you're losing is the activity. So the other fighter has been more active. And for the first half of the fight, Yardi was too relaxed. He had the shoulder up. He was doing the whole shoulder roll. When he said, no, 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 I'm losing this fight, I'm gonna put gloves up. You remember how Floyd came up with his hands against um, Conor McGregor? He was just walk- he didn't rate his. No, I'm just saying. You remember how he did? Yeah, yeah, you remember how he didn't rate his power? He had his gloves up. Yeah, he walked him down. Yard started doing that and started going to the body, and Kovalev didn't like it. So with the boxing IQ, you're right. 
if you, you know they can identify, okay, I've got this guy. What he should have done was just been paced himself. I'm going to go to the body and I'm going to get him out of there. But he was a bit too... We'll, we'll see, but I, I'm, for Yard, I've got more... I've got time for I'm Yard. I'm calling him Yardy. <laughs> I've, got, I've got time for Yard. I've got time for Yard. Because as well, what I like, I like his reaction as well. Like, what, at the end of the I'm fight? Not an, I'm not on an excuse to yeah, you, I lost the fight. I, I didn't come here to lose. I lost the fight. Yeah, it might have been experience and that, but I lost the fight like at the end of the day. So I like that attitude and, and he's going to go back again. Um, before we get out of here, did you watch the AJ Untold or whatever it's yeah, called? Yeah. Did you watch it now? Yeah. Alright, cool. Let's talk about that. What do you think about AJ in terms of like, have you seen a change in him, or is this the same AJ and just after AJ, it? All? I think AJ's bored. I think even the lead up to the he's bored. He just wants to fight Ruiz. What did you message me in the week after you saw it? It was something to do along the along he the lines was, of he's work. He's in this interview. He was saying a whole bag of nothings. Yeah. He even made the girl feel awkward. Like, the, the, he was saying a whole... You know when someone's trying to be straight and upfront to the point where he wasn't even... He was just talking about a whole, I'm trying to get to this destination, but to get to this destination, I'm trying to go here. I'm, did the belts don't make me... They're bruv, parables, isn't it? Bruv, just stop talking. Just the nonsense. Are you going to do the interview or not? What was the aim of the interview? Because the girl was asking questions. The woman was asking some good questions. The thing is, the thing is, it, was, it wasn't... I remember when um, Stelios was saying that it wasn't a good PR move or whatever. The PR move is done by the... Obviously, the PR team just put you in the interview. Mm. What you say is down to you, bruv. Like, no, you, no, I'm sure they, they no, no, I'm saying, prep you, you on some You can come out and just say, yo, like, I'm just trying to get my belts back. All this lead up to it, I'm not on. I'm just ready for December 7th to knock this guy out because I want my belts back. But when you're talking about the whole, ah, oh, you know what, yeah, maybe next time I won't let him touch my belts. Maybe that wasn't right. And uh, I'm trying to get to the, the destination of the stars. And uh, what are you talking about, AJ? <laughs> Are you a boxer? What's going on here? I know you're trying to do the Muhammad Ali thing in this day and age, trying to influence you. I went to Nigeria, the ghettos. I didn't stay in the rich part. I went to the ghettos. Okay, cool, bruv. Are you going to knock this guy out or not? Is that no, but he was saying that, and that's what I'm saying. For me, AJ, it was two things. I was kind of impressed and kind of optimistic about the... He's got a bit of a spite in him, yeah? Where he was like... Nah, man. I don't, I didn't like, see no, no. And I'm a fan of AJ. Huh? I didn't see that. No, no. But I see, he, I see a, I see a man that's, I see a man that's a little bit lost. I'm not gonna lie to no, you. No, but he was saying like, yeah, it was a lucky punch. All this stuff that that's what I'm saying. It was mixed because even though he's saying, nah, I'm gonna, be my, I'm gonna win it back, and nine, nine, nine times out of ten, I win that. I can see that side like, ah, right, cool, yeah, man. He's got that back. Like now he knows he studied him. He's gonna win it. However, it's a bit worrying, like. The way he was talking. Like, what I'm saying, it was a lucky punch, but how long is it taking you to say that? Any boxing... What, what was a lucky punch? Ruiz is punching. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was lucky punch in fighting back, but yeah. after that, yeah, he never recovered no, but from that. Not, but he's saying that it's the first knockdown that done him. Oh, after that, that he was concussed. Yeah, 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 okay. After that, there so was no... the problem. first one was a yeah, lucky punch. Because obviously, they're just both swinging and he caught him in the right area, bang. Mm. Do you got what I'm saying? And he's gone down. But for me, I didn't take nothing at that interview. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't even remember what... I just remember about the stars and I'm just destined. You hear me saying stars. No, I'm just paraphrasing <laughs> where he was going. Like he was all over the I didn't know. I'm an AJ fan. Bro, he was talking. Bro, you know that no, no, but wait. I I I'm gonna say AJ always does this though. But when you're winning, it just seems like his music to no, you no, is. No, 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 he no, always no. talks in parables no, 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 like no, 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 Yeah, you know, is it my legacy? No, 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 he talks no, like no, that. No, no. <laughs> let me let me tell you, let me tell you the difference, what I feel. When he was winning, or whatever it is, he's secure in the destination where he wants to get to. He's secure in the destination where he wants to get to. Right now, I feel well. there's a bit of him that's doubting himself. I feel there's a bit of him that's spiteful. I think there's a bit of him that's ready to rumble tomorrow. There's all sorts of oh, stuff. That's good. It makes the story sweeter. No, no, no. It makes the story sweeter, but all that sort of stuff, it still doesn't lead to one focus, which is Ruiz. Mm. It doesn't still lead. It, it doesn't feel like that to me. It feels like, number one, he's bored of the lead up. Cool. But you still have to do it. That's just what it is. Like you've got to do the lead up. You're, it's your promotion team that took so long to organise this fight. So you got to do the lead up to it. I can tell that. But when he's talking about, I don't care if you went to Nigeria, the ghettos. I don't care, bro. Like we don't care about that. Cool. Do that in your spare time. Advertise it. Film it. Whatever it is. That's your homeland anyway. Should be going there anyway. Do you get what I'm saying? But when he's talking about the ghettos of Nigeria, then the stars. And then Ruiz, and then don't chat to me about Wilder. If it then, well, if Fury was fighting Wilder, like, I, like, I like that if though. I, fight, I, I like that though. Wildland, the whole I don't want to talk about Wilder yeah, unless there's any. But what I'm saying, AJ. What I'm saying, AJ. Before you lost, you weren't talking like that. Because he knows now. That's what I'm saying. He's not deluded that no. yet. I'm still looking at Wilder. He's not overlooking no, this guy now. I don't want to hear about anything else apart from Ruiz. 
with AJ, he shouldn't have said nothing about them guys. That's what he should have done from the start. You see, when he said, yo, don't chat to me about Wilder and thing no more. You should have done that from yeah, the start. Yeah, but come on, it's all hindsight. It's, we all do things that right. we look back at that now. This is what I'm saying about in terms of boxing. They know it's a combat sport and that. Like when you're coming out talking about, oh, maybe I didn't take Ruiz that seriously or whatever. That there is also an issue. This is what I'm saying. You can't let outside influences come in as a but you got to be focused on what you're going for. Hard to do, though. Come on, they're all human. He met him for the first time at the press conference. For the first time. This is what I'm saying. Are the titles on the line or not? Yeah. So if you take Ruiz lightly and he beats you, is the Wilder fight any closer? No, it's not. This is this is why I always rate people like Mayweather and people keep ga- people keep talking about oh, Mayweather this is that right. bro Mayweather's always clocked into whether it's Canelo whether it's um, Ortiz oh, whether it's it doesn't matter what fight he's, he's you can fighting. say what you want to say about Floyd but the professionalism, the professionalism in him is just that, there bro if it's Ortiz I'm fighting and people are saying he's whack you should beat him when he sleep I don't care I'm still gonna train hard for that mm-hmm. so only man like Conor McGregor I'll just wake up and just my boxing IQ would just take. Mm-hmm. Advantage of I just let him box himself out and whatever, whatever. But everyone else that's a boxer, he takes them very, very seriously because he knows what can happen at the end of the day. These boxers and that, yeah, you want to get to this destination and that destination, you want to be bigger than boxing. I get that, AJ. We want you to be bigger than boxing. We want those sort of role models around the new kids that are coming up. But focus, your boxing is going to take you everywhere. Your boxing, your your legacy, your that's what's going to take you places, not thinking about oh I'm, I'm i'm bigger than the belts the belts don't make me okay cool even if you feel like that keep that in your own psyche keep that in your own home now all of a sudden you're talking too much like but you're talking out both sides of your mouth but what no, you, he is he is but what are you saying i'm an aj fan this is what i'm trying to say so when i saw that interview there's nothing i can take out that interview that's like yo ruiz you're in trouble where mm. like there's nothing i just feel like yo is this brother doubting himself is he because brother if, if you watch the woman bro she's just like Am I interviewing AJ here or is it some sort of like... This whole spill. He's just, just talking out, bruv. I don't, I don't know what he said in that interview. I couldn't tell you. Uh, well, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, another week, another podcast. Guys, it's been good. We'll see you next week. I might not be around. Get me. I've got other commitments okay. to make. Stag get me. Stag. Get, <laughs> hey, where's the bears? Get the lag, Get the lagers at. <laughs> Get me, so I might not be here, but Coach will be here. Hopefully, uh, we'll have some other guests. So, yeah, till next week, guys. Peace and love.